It's really a very great pleasure for me today on The Joy of Music to have as my guest a very good friend, an outstanding artist, Ann Martindale Williams. Welcome to The Joy of Music, Ann. Thank you, Diane. It's a pleasure to be here. I suppose one of the first questions that people want to ask you is how you started playing the cello. Did you start when you were young? I guess you would say I was young, however, not by today's Suzuki standards where the kids start when they're two, three, or four. I started when I was seven years old. Uh, my mother was a cellist and she wanted me to play the cello and so I began studying. Not with her, however, because I think studying with parents is kind of difficult at times, but I studied with her best friend. Were you inspired by your mother's playing or just the fact that she wanted you to play? Um, I can't remember, actually. <laughs> Did she um, have to make you practice? Oh, yes. I was terrible. You didn't want to practice? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I, I had a very, you might say, normal childhood in that I liked to participate in sports and had a lot of friends and we, I always felt in a way deprived in that I had to spend a lot of time practicing. However, um, I thank my parents for urging me to practice right. at that time because it has paid off. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your education. Um, you went to the Curtis Institute of Music, didn't you? That's right. I, I went first out of high school. I went for two years to the New School of Music in Philadelphia, and then I went uh, for four years to the Curtis Institute. And after the Curtis Institute, where did you go? I went directly to the Pittsburgh Symphony as assistant principal cellist for a few years and then moved over to the principal chair. Isn't that quite an honor for a, for a, a lady to have the, that chair? <laughs> well, it is for anyone, actually. I it's, think so. <laughs> It's, uh, it's a terrific job. My, uh, I, I'm able to play solos with the orchestra, concertos, and uh, I also play a lot of chamber music within, with members of the orchestra and also with our conductor, Andre Previn. Now, tell us something about your instrument. I know you have a very priceless cello, and it's something I know you like to talk about. Well, um, I have a problem in that my hands are very small. And I wanted to find a cello that had a very big sound, but yet that I could get around it on. And um, so I called many of the dealers in the country, and I said, I told them what I needed. And it took about two years to find the instrument that I wanted. I bought it out in Chicago. It's um, made by a maker named uh, David Teckler in Rome in 1701. And he is a very, very famous maker of cellos. Is it? really that important that you have uh, such a, a unique instrument as this? Is the sound that different? Well, yes. You might not be able to hear the difference in this uh, sound in a small room. However, when you would get into a large concert hall, you'd find that a cello such as this would be able to carry to the back of the hall, and that's what you pay for. <laughs> because of the wood in the instrument or because of the way it's made? Uh, both. Now, Anne, I understand that when you travel on a plane, you have to have a seat for oh, this yes. instrument, an extra seat. It's very expensive to travel, yeah. You have to buy a seat. And you have to travel in the, in the front row front of the Front row of the, in the bulkhead seat, yes. They won't allow you to sit anyplace That's else? That's correct. Anne, is there anything that you would rather do than play the cello? I mean, if you went back in your life and you had your choice of doing something, would you choose to play the cello again? Yeah, I think I really would. Because you love playing it. I love to play the cello. I love to play for people. I love to be able to express what's inside me to other people, to communicate.
Thank you.